Good evening everyone. So today I'm going to be looking at some requests that were quite common on my videos and elsewhere on the internet. And those requests are for saving and loading game state and for transitioning levels. And I thought it'd be interesting to do one. Um, and because I enjoy making games, I've made uh, this tutorial into a game. It is a game based around saving and loading. So the game is about collecting all four coins and there's a button for new game and P.S. You can only move right and jump. Why is that? Well, let's click new game and find out. Well, instantly you see what the problem is. If you can only move right, well, then this little section over here will catch you. Well, okay, let's work our way around it. So we've picked up a coin and we can see the coins disappeared and we transition to the next level. Ooh, another interesting one. See, there are two sections here where not being able to go left. See, I'm tapping left right now. I can tap right, but left, nothing happens. Um, where if you go into, you won't be able to get out. And then there's a button back. Now notice, when I come back, this coin I've collected has already, well, it's not reappeared, it's still there. Well, anyway, let's try getting a coin. So we've got a coin and we can't go back. How do we get out of this? Well, as I said, the tutorial is about saving and loading. If we click on main menu, we can click load game, and it brings us back to the beginning of the level that we were at. Suddenly, it becomes a lot uh, somehow, suddenly it makes a lot more sense. We can go down here, grab our coin, hop back to the main menu, load game, and then finally go back and collect our fourth coin over here. And then if we go to the main menu again, you win, smiley face, and then a button for new game. If we click new game, everything resets, and you can go about it um, as before. Now I admit, I love making games, but I am not very good at making puzzle games. Um, I playtested this on a friend and, well, it's, it's a little bit mind-boggling and to be fair there aren't nearly enough cues. Like, if I was actually doing this, I, what I might want is whenever you go to a new level or whenever you spawn in, it says, aha, game saved, to try and give some kind of information that uh, I'm meant to be using the same, the save feature. But it's a bit of a puzzle, it's a bit of a meta-brain teaser. And now let's dissect it. Now, there's kind of quite a lot going on here, so I'll try breaking it apart and I'll try taking each part slowly. And we're going to start with the main menu. Now, you're going to see this a lot, these lines. Um, this is how we do save variables. You have read, blah, from storage, another blah, and store it in a scene variable. So here we read, so storage is the generics file. Let's think of it that way, that it's being stored in. And for this, I've just used game for everything. Um, and so read score and store it in a scene variable called score. Read level and store it in a, uh, a scene variable called saved level. Uh, and what we do here at the beginning of the scene is we're saying um, when you load the menu, read uh, prepare the last state that the player was in. And what's also useful for this, because it's at the beginning of this, beginning of the game, is that, well, I've just loaded the game again after closing it. Yeah, it's still in play. So if I collect this coin here, exit the entire game, restart it, and then press load, we're going to join in on the second level and the coin we selected has disappeared. This persists between uh, between plays. It doesn't just persist in the game itself. So you can 100% use this, if you imagine, like uh, if a player exits your game and comes back and any amount of time later, everything is still saved. Um, so we have our buttons for new game and if we click new game then we reset all of the different storages so we delete we delete any of the saved variables we have we set our gl our global variable score and we're using a global variable so that it stays the same across all our three scenes um, we are saving that we're saving to local storage that we are beginning at level one and then changing scene this is how you change scenes um, I'm sure in a future video I might try looking at like doing funky transition effects but this is it. You just say change scene. One scene is removed, one scene is added. Uh, and down here, all of this does is just decide whether you see load game or new game. So for example, um, you will see load game if the... Uh, sorry, you will see load game, delete object new game, because um, all of these are... you can see them layered on top of each other. So you will see load game if the quote-unquote level exists um, so if we have a saved level so if the player if we assume the player has begun something 
and if our global score is not 4, because once our global score is 4, well, you've won, and we can display that. Let's move on to the levels themselves. Um, this is where things get a little more interesting. Uh, so you can see our level um, fairly simply placed up, and then a small little helper so that you can't fall off the edge. This is kind of where the magic happens and the interesting part. Play when our player hits a coin, we are writing this interesting line into our uh, saved storage. Why do we write it like this and what are we doing? So let's break it apart uh, left to right. Firstly, it starts with level one and you will see on the next scene called level two, that is called level two. I'm doing this so that I can break it up and say, right, these, uh, these coins belong to level one and these coins belong to level two. Hide coin, that's just what I decided to call it. It's totally arbitrary, but it makes sense to me. I want to call it hide coin. And then we are saving as a string coins ID. Now, this isn't something the game gives it, something I've given the game. I've given, um, I've given it specifically. Uh, so if you, where did I put it? It was on this side? Okay, so under instance variable, you can see that there is an ID field and that the ID is two. There it should be one, don't know why it's not. In any event, it doesn't matter. Um, what I'm doing under the events is when the player collides with a coin, I'm writing level one, hide coin, one or level one height coin two into the uh, saved storage and just for comparison uh, level two is not identical level two height coin one level two height coin two so here we have coin one there we have coin two and the reason we're doing that is so that when we come back to the game later we know which coins have already been taken and we can re automatically remove it um, from the things. And we do that inside of this external event, remove collected coins. Um, external events, they live under here. And what I'm using them for is code that is being re is identical across all scenes. So for example, uh, player movement, collected coin. Let's look at remove collected coins because that's the interesting one. So when you include at the top here, it's run as if it's, all this code is run as if it existed exactly there. So if you, for example, nested it inwards, it runs nested. And you'll see an example of that in a bit. So at the beginning of the scene, for every coin object in the scene, construct a string out of the name of the current level. And the name of the current level is uh, hard-coded. So inside of scene properties, you'll see current level, level one. So from the name of the current level plus hide coin plus the ID of that coin. And what you do is if it exists, what that means is if it is written there, delete the coin. And this is the magic behind once you've collected a coin, it no longer reappears. So if we go back to my menu, So we know there's a coin there. We know there's a coin meant to be there. What's happened is as soon as we load into it is that it will search ID1 and ID2 and it will try and find that inside of the save storage. We have ID1 written in there and so the coin will be deleted. So we've just collected ID2. We click main menu. We click load game. Both those coins, the level is spawned in and they exist. And then one by one, they are taken out there because we have them available, uh, because we have them written into our saved storage. So that's how that works. Let's now look at uh, collect coin. So remember what I said before. So if we you collect, if you are collided with a coin, um, save to storage that we have collected it. And in the future, when we load this level. Uh, we want that to be deleted. We want that to be removed. Um, collect coin, it 
deletes the object, adds one to score, and saves the global slave saves score uh, into storage. Now, remember, this is the example I said of. Ordinarily, this doesn't make any sense in its own context. Well, which coin is to be deleted? But when you look here, it's included as a nested child. It, it has the same context that uh, it would ordinarily have. So it is absolutely fine being there. The Probably the last thing to dissect is player movement. So uh, I extracted what the, what the how the player functions into an external event, and I've just included that into all into the different levels. So on player movement, it's very similar to the regular character control. In fact, the player, move, player is um, a regular platform character. What I've done, however, is what, if a left key is pressed, I've told it to ignore default controls for the player. And when the right key is pressed, like unignore them. And this allows me to get the feature of the player can't move left. The player can only move right and they can only jump. Oh, and there is a little cheaty helper. Uh, this is for development, and this is just for convenience, that pressing the letter Q allows you to hop back to the main menu and uh, reset everything. So if I load here, uh, say I get stuck and I just don't want to do anything, I can just press Q, and I, the game begins again. I made this for myself, um, just to make life easier as I was testing this. I believe that covers all of it. The only thing I haven't said is how to get to next levels. Well, like so. Um, when I cut, when the player collides with the quote unquote end level icon, I save to storage that I've reached level two. And I change the scene to level two. And equally, when I reach the end of the level, I write to scene, write to storage level one, and I change the scene to level one. It actually breaks down quite simply um, and quite cleanly. I suppose the main menu is the part with the most going on. Um, but outside of that, it's fairly straightforward. When we are using our storage in order to save the information we want. We save the score we have, we save the level we're on, and we use our own little, our own little set aside, I don't know, way of identifying what uh, coins have already been collected. I hope this has been of interest. Uh, I had a lot of fun making this, and I get a lot of enjoyment out of seeing the requests people come up with. So if you have any questions or queries on this, um, something that might require an extension, or if you have any ideas you'd like to see me try in the future, please feel free to Comment it down below, and a like and a thumbs up uh, also doesn't go amiss. So thank you very much, I'll be seeing you next time. Bye!